Welcome again, mga kaigsunan, sa ato ang uh, uh, BCC Online uh, Worship Celebration. Uh, we just had the opportunity to praise the Lord together, you know, and uh, also to pray and intercede uh, as we already have been doing uh, for many, many months now. And uh, thank the Lord for many answered prayers. Powerful miracles that has happened, uh, souls that were saved, you know. Uh, uh, three people, three, pe three persons that I know have been miraculously uh, restored by the Lord from, uh, from cancer. You know, from cancer. So, tubag sa pagampo, na ipipila nga siyempre may medical assistance, but uh, God has turned around their, uh, their condition. And uh, today, they are well and whole by the grace of Jesus. And uh, so, grabe kayo kabuutan si Lord. And today, our lesson again uh, is taken from uh, the letter of Paul to the church in uh, Philippi. Hallelujah. We will be learning so much from this letter. It's a short letter. As we all know, uh, Paul wrote this letter while he was in prison during his first imprisonment. And uh, this is one. Uh, this is called one of the prison uh, letters, because lit written by Paul while inside uh, the prison. Our lesson last Sunday was the first lesson taken from uh, this letter, and uh, among other things, we mentioned there in Philippians one, uh, verse number four. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. And then the next, because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Always praying with joy, si Paul, kay nasa reason, partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. We will take a look at this, ano, ano, unsay, unsay, buti pa sabutan ng partnership in the gospel. How did the newly born Christian church in Philippi partnered in the gospel through the ministry of Paul and his team. We'll discover that in a while. Before we proceed, let's pause for a time of prayer. Thanksgiving for the word. Thank you for the word today, dear Father God, that you will give to us to continue to instruct us and inspire us to continue to build each one of our life, Lord God, to strengthen us so that we will be able to carry on the assignment that you have given to us as your church. That assignment is to go, preach the gospel, win souls, make them into disciples, teach them everything that you have given to your people and help them or, or help them so that they will live an obedient life. Teach them to obey all things that you commanded. Uh, that's our responsibility. You have given that responsibility to the church, O oh Lord, to us, your people. And so we praise you for the help that comes to the Holy Spirit. Even now, as we will learn from this letter, we ready our hearts and our minds, O oh Lord. Holy Spirit, thank you for your gracious work in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So again, we remember that Paul was uh, praying, always praying for all the believers in uh, Philippi, we remember that they were newly born in the Lord. Da? Bago pa sila, diha kay Lord. And yet, uh, uh, partners na sila. Uh, da? That's why Paul was praying with joy because of your partnership. He told them, in the gospel, from the first day, meaning from the first day that you came to know the Lord, until now, wow, power kayo na nga description ba? First day pa lang ni Mudia sa Ginoo, nag-partner na ka kay Lord. Unya, wa ka ni undang, hangtod ka ron. Maybe six months na, one year na, three years, five years na, ten years na, wala ka ni undang sa bao nga partnership sa pag-alagad kay Lord. So let's take a look paano nila gi-express ka ng partnership in the gospel, which was a good, excellent picture sa usaka Tinood niya disciple. Tinood niya nakabig na diha kay Lord. Despite all the conditions around, situations they were in. Remember, they were persecuted. They were, they were the 
the Christian disciples were not accepted in the community. They were considered as, uh, uh, you know, mga suspects, kumbaga. No? The government was looking down on them with extra care because they might, you know, uh, become uh, insurgents that will uh, overthrow the government. And that's why, and many other reasons. So take a look at this one, and we will learn three things from their this partnership in the gospel. Three things. We can all read this in the letter of Paul to this uh, uh, Christian group here in, in Philippi. What does it mean to partner in the gospel? Hallelujah. What does that mean? It means, first, you partner in the gospel by proclaiming the gospel. The Christian church here, which was barely new, have done that. Let's uh, jump to verse 14. Chapter 1, verse 14. Because of my chains, <clears throat> because of my chains, remember Paul was in prison in Philippi. I related the story. You can read it yourself in Acts chapter 16. He was put to chain, his head and even his feet together with Silas. Here he was talking about that experience, that event which happened in his life. Because of my chains, most of the brothers in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. Meaning to say, the, Christ, the, the Christian believers there, they were already beginning to share the gospel. And then Paul was put into prison. You know, he was put into prison, put into change. Huh? And yet, they did not stop. They were even more courageous than fearlessly, you know, speaking, proclaiming the gospel. And when Paul wrote this letter, he was in prison, you know. And that will, that was, that could have been uh, a reason for them to call off and call down. And maybe they will say, let's move to another place. Let's just be silent for a while. You know, let's allow these things to settle. Medyo mainit, no? Init ang gobyerno sa tua. Hilom lang sa takantiyot. No! That was not the actuation that they took. Instead, they became more courageous and fearless in speaking the word of God. Hallelujah. So imagine, you know, partnering in the gospel means proclaiming the gospel to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, the result of that you know, the result of that partnership of this handful, not many, but not, just a handful of believers, newly born believers, but because of the empowerment of the Spirit, they became bold and courageous in proclaiming the gospel even though they were young. That partnership resulted in the planting of Macedonian churches. We remember that when we go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Verse number 1, Corinthians 8, verse 1, 2 Corinthians, Now, brothers, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. Philippi was the capital of the province of Macedonia. Remember that? Yeah? It was named after King Philip of Macedon. So, this province was eventually littered with churches, meaning congregations of God's people, you know, beginning with the church in Philippi. Because of their partnership, wherein they started on day one, until now, until now means at the time when Paul was writing the letter, we don't know how many years has transpired, but you know, they were going strong in the Lord. They were emboldened to preach the gospel. That's how it happened that it ended up that there were many congregations in the province that were birthed, no longer through the instrumentality of Paul, but through the believers in Philippi. Of course, the church in Philippi was started by Paul, but the other congregations in the surrounding province, in the surrounding area of the province, you know, we're all not anymore the result of the direct result of Paul's ministry, but the result of the ministry of the Philippian Christians who were not cowered in fear. 
but instead emboldened to proclaim the gospel, even though Paul himself was already in prison. You know, sometimes when your leader fails or when your leader, leader is, uh, has become, let's say, discouraged, there is a tendency that you become affected as well. Diba? But not in this case. They were not. No. Instead, they became more courageous and proclaimed the good news of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Amen? Also in Philippi, when we go to verses 15 to verses 18, we will also discover the presence of mature and immature preachers. Listen to this one. Let's go to Philippians 1 with verse 15. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so in love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether, by, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice. So Paul was talking about the presence of preachers in the Philippian uh, congregation who were immature, but there were also those who were already mature in the Lord as they, you know, partnered in proclaiming uh, the gospel. Let's, uh, let's uh, take a look at this one. His description of the immature preachers, they preach out of envy and rivalry. That is in verse 15. No? Some preach out of envy and rivalry. Others out of selfish ambition. Others are not sincere, not sincerely. But, praise God, there were those who preach out of good will. Diba? Out of good will. Excuse me. <clears throat> good will means kind feeling or benevolent interest. It also means not forced, meaning to say you do it on your own. You know? Sometimes we use the word organic, you know? When something is organic, it's just naturally growing. Meaning to say these preachers naturally on their own, they started to share the gospel. Although some, the others, mayroong mga mangilan nila na medyo tabingi pa yung kanila mga puso. Wala pa sa nat hindi pa nasa tamang lugar. No? Selfish ambition, uh, preaching because of envy. Maybe they heard somebody na uh, preach. You know, sabi, ah, sabi nila, oy, mas maayong pa kumuha li, ana. Paminawa ko. And so they went and preached. So they were not really motivated by good, but the godly motives. In fact, later on, out uh, uh selfish ambition and uh, false motives. Paul was talking about false motives. Diba? And of course, there are others who have genuine motives, true motives. Uh, some preach out of uh out of goodwill, and also others do so in love, love for God and love for the people. So this the picture this picture gives us the idea that, that the church there were practically uh, many of them, if not all of them, were involved in propagating the gospel. That's how they partner. Although some were because of their immaturity, may mga issue yung kanila mga puso, no? envy, uh, competition, ang iba, false motive, they want siguro to make money out of, of the things. And yet, listen to the take of Paul. No, we read that, but let's read it again. Paul's take in verse uh, 18. Sabi in verse 18, but what does it matter? What does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice. You know, in this case, Paul was not judging them because of their false motives. Paul was not judging them because some of them were envious. Some of them, you know, were, uh, you know, motivated by rivalry. Others are selfish, ambition. Others were not sincere. Uh, for Paul, the most important thing is they were preaching the gospel. Imagine that, mga kaigsunan, no? 
Wala akong encouragement sa inyo ha. Pag isang pag-upa mo sa ginoo, sangyaw lang ba? Sangyaw lang. Isang pag-anig, mali-mali pa na imong gina, kanabitong ginahimo ni mo kay bata pa ka sa ginoo, one week old, three months old, ano, no? ang imong doktrina, mali-mali pa na. Sige lang. Sangyaw lang. Kaysa wala tiyo kay gibuhat, magulat kag kanus ka mo, tiguwang sa ginoo, Ana by the time nga tiguan ka na mas daghan pag excuses lang mo abot sa imuhan you lose the opportunity of partnering with the gospel. Uh -oh. So Paul was happy nga somebody was preaching the gospel. Ah, you can say a crisis preach. Whatever in every way whether from false motives or true motives crisis preach. Silo na ang bahala na importante kay wali ang iyahang pagalan. Ana gani. Sao na. Ang partnership with the gospel was proclaiming the gospel. Ikaduha, let's proceed. Partnership with the gospel also means providing support for the propagation of the gospel. The Christians in Philippi were very good at that. That's why when Paul prays for them, he was praying for them with joy because of your partnership in the gospel until now. How did they express that partnership in the gospel? Later on, in Paul's letter, we go to chapter 4, Philippians 4, verse number 14. Philippians 4, verse 14, Paul says, Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel. Look at that. In the early days of your acquaintance in the gospel, meaning to say, sa bago pa mo, diha kay Lord, Ana, baguhan pa mo kay Lord, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. Imagine mo, sa kadaghan na sa mga simbahan na gito ko ni Pablo, wala yung simbahan nga nag-support financially kang Pablo on their own. No? Bago pa sila kay Lord, nakahuna-huna na sila, ana. let's do this. Let's raise some funds. Let's give it to Paul and his team. Ha? In the manner of giving and receiving, except you only. Diba? And then, verse 16, For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid again and again when I was in need. You see? But I really like to point out, because in, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, we will see here the characteristic traits of uh, genuine giving, no? We, call, we can call this organic giving. Let's go to chapter 8. Let's uh, start now with verse number 2. Out of the most severe trial, uh, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. Meaning their generosity was very rich, although their actual condition was very poor. They were in extreme poverty, you know? But their heart was full of generosity, rich generosity. Kaya ang paghatag lagi, dili man na base sa kondisyon sa pitaka, base na sa kondisyon sa kasing-kasing. Ang paghatag. Diba? Then look at the next verse. For I testify that they, they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. Now look at, look at the next few words there. I'm using the New International Version. Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the saints. In kanang line, and entirely on their own. Meaning sila, wala gi-impose ni Paul sa ila. Wala si Paul nag-notify, oh, you need to raise funds for us, for our ministry. You need to raise funds for us because we need pamasay, because we need to buy food, because we need to rent. Wala, entirely on their own. Muna ang genuine na partnership with the gospel. This is the gracious work of the Spirit of God sa ilahang kinabuhi. Entirely on the own. Karon makita na ito, uso kaayon ng mag-fundraising, no? ang mga alagad sa gino, mag-fundraising. Ang uban nga ni, ang ilang fundraising, para ragyon sa ilang sarili. No? Mag-fundraising sila, kay magpalit sila bagong sakyanan, o mag-fundraising kay magbiyahe pa ingon sa asa na dito nga lugar, fundraising kay mag-extension sa balay, ana gani, fundraising kay magpalit na pong laing sakyanan in addition sa nakahiliran na nga sakyanan, ana gani. 
But here there was no fundraising. It was entirely on our own. That is the genuine partnership with the gospel. Mga kaigsunan, it is our God. Actually, mo na yung ato ginaampo, mga kaigsunan, as far as with us, BCC people. We pray for a movement, an organic kind of movement, a spirit-born and a spirit-sustained movement so that the people of God on entirely on their own through the prompting of the Spirit, they will act. They will share the gospel. They will give. They will serve to people. They will cross the street. Whatever they will do, they will do it because they're prompted by Spirit. It is not imposed on them by any human person, but it is all because the grace of God is at work in their life. Mauna nga itong ginabo, mga insunan. Hallelujah! Amen! True and genuine partnership with the gospel. And then, ah, because of that, let's go back sa Philippians, sila po ang gisaaran sa ginawa ni powerful nga promise. Many of us are familiar with this verse. Philippians 4, verse 19. Look at this verse. Philippians 4, verse 19. And my God will meet all your needs or shall supply all your needs according to His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Now think about this uh, verse. As I said, many Christians have familiarized themselves with this verse, even memorize this verse, quoting this verse every time they are in financial need, but they forgot to consider the context where this verse is found. It was given, this verse and this promise was given to a church who even though they were in extreme poverty and yet entirely on their own, they gave according to their capacity to give. Hallelujah! They gave voluntarily, sacrificially, lovingly, cheerfully. It was to them that the Apostle Paul said, God loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah! To them it was given this promise. My God and my God will meet your needs according to His riches, glorious riches in Christ Jesus. So when you partner with the gospel by providing, you know, for the needs of the people of God, as they also try to seek the help of the Lord in proclaiming the gospel, to you, the Lord will provide all your needs. Amen. You do not need to plead and beg before God for Him to provide you with all the needs. He will provide. Hallelujah. This is exactly what Jesus was talking about way back in the Gospel in Matthew chapter 6, verse 20 or 33. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things. He was directly talking to these disciples who might be tempted to be worried or anxious or fearful about their tomorrow, about their future, about where they will get their clothes, where they will get their food. You know? To them, Jesus was talking directly. Do not be anxious. Do not be worried. Just do the will of the Lord. Just seek the kingdom of God first. Hallelujah. Amen. And His righteousness. Then all the other things that you con are concerned about, you know, that you need in your life, will come to you. It will be added unto you. Hallelujah. Amen. My God will supply all your needs according to His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Now, you who are partnering in the gospel, no? partner mo sa Ibanghilyo, no? nag-share mo sa gospel, nag-handle mo og life group, ano, ganin, nag atiman mo og mga kalag, ano, no? nag-do ministry mo, nag-hatag pa jud mo, hallelujah, you know? Karun lisyon na ang panahon, di ba? Nag-anong kalisyon panahon, ay gira and everything, ang mahal kayo, ni sakag mayo ang gasolina, but my God will supply all your needs. Amen! Ha? Do you believe that? I mean, kami lang, you know, testimonyo ko, gina-insert ako din ni kami, ba? Doon ka tuig na good, may wala na withdraw allowance sa simbahan, pero paloy siya, ginuoki naman yung gyapon ni. Wala man hinoon mi na dato, parehan, Henry C. Pero asan mi na puraot, oy, kaon sa ginipirmi, oy. Ha? Diba? Because my God will supply. Aside from that, on top of that all, you have the peace of mind and the joy of the Lord in your life and in your heart. Because you know you are there in the thick of doing, you know, the kingdom purpose and agenda of the Lord, you, you know, 
gloriously and gladly and sincerely without being coerced or forced. Amen. And you are observing how the Lord is performing His promise on His people. You are seeing God providing them. You are seeing God blessing the work of their hands. So you are seeing God prospering them. Amen. What a beautiful thing to behold. You are a front seat witness. <laughs> You are a front seat witness of how God is fulfilling His word on the lives of His people. And so you will have a powerful testimony. Amen? So, ikatulo. Una, on sa ganito, how do they partner with, with uh, the gospel? They proclaim the gospel. So, they provided uh, for the people of God in proclaiming the gospel. Those who are, you know, they have some need, they raise them entirely on their own. And thirdly, implied here, you know, they prayed for the advance of the gospel. Let me read this verse here. Philippians 4, verse number 3. Yes, and I ask you, loyal yoke fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel. That line contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. This line contended with my side in the cause of the gospel implies a spiritual warfare. Sometimes we call that prayer. You know? But it can also mean that literally Paul has this team standing along beside him. Women are some of them, have helped these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel. But it can also imply that they were fiercely praying and fighting spiritually in spiritual warfare against the forces of the enemy, you know, so that the gospel will continue to advance to the next village, the next house, the next barangay, the next purok, the next town. The churches will be established or Founded in these places. We're not talking, remember, when we talk about church, we no longer mean the building. We mean congregations of God's people, regardless of the number. It can begin with three people. Because back then in the gospel, Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am in the midst of them. That's the minimum. Gathering of the church of Jesus Christ. But imagine if this handful of people will keep on multiplying because there is a an intense and a passionate prayer from the people of God, men and women alike, partnering with the gospel because of partnering with the gospel, they are praying for this gospel to advance against all obstacles, against all roadblocks, against all persecutions, against all trials, difficulties, and whatever. Our only assurance is when we rely on the power of God through prayer. Hallelujah. Praise God that in, in this newly born congregation, there were people there, men and women alike, who have discovered that one of the most important things that they can do in partnering with the gospel is praying. Hallelujah. So you have these three, three, three things that you can partner. Right now, you can do this. You are doing this already. Some of you are doing this already, but you can do even more. Increase. Your partnership with the gospel. Increase your time to speak, to proclaim the good news, to invite people. Increase your time to send the link, send the, share the gospel story, share the broadcast. You can do many things. Bisag na alang ka sa imong balay. Ah, bisag na kalang sa imong balay with you, you with a cell phone. Padad ani mo eh. Send out na imong sa mga tao. Lapulo ka tao kada, kada Sunday. May, who knows what the Holy Spirit will do? And then you pray. For the Holy Spirit to use your simple effort by sharing. That's a very simple effort. That's the least that you can do. But you ask the Holy Spirit, Oh, Holy Spirit, work in their hearts. Oh, Holy Spirit, convict them once they open, once they view, once they hear. One line, one sentence, one paragraph, even one word would be enough to prick their conscience and break the resistance of the enemy in their heart. To remove the veil of darkness over the mind. So that enlightenment and understanding will come. You can pray. Who knows? And the result would be churches will be established. Disciples will be birthed in many other places. The gospel will advance and the kingdom of God will increase. Amen. 
I believe that is what is going, going to happen will increase the web, web. As I said, we're seeing that already happening among VCC people. But it will increase even more as we continue to do these three things, partnering with the gospel. Amen? Proclaiming the gospel, you know, providing for the needs of the ministry of the gospel, and then praying for the advance of the gospel. They did this in Philippi since the first day until now. Walang iwanan, walang hintuan. Patuloy, mga kaisyonan. Padayon ta sa paglakaw diha kay Lord, ang iyang garsya o gahaw maguban ka nato. Let's pray. Father, salamat kayo. Thank you kayo, gay mong pulong. Lord Jesus, thank you. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Holy Spirit, thank you. Sa imong intercession, sa imong tabang, ikaw ang gihatag para mo tabang. Kampanti kami, O Lord. Embolden kami, may encourage kami, O Lord. We will take steps, we will move on, we will aggressively pursue your kingdom agenda in prayers, but also with our giving as well as with our actual sharing the word. You, our words will be full of your word. When we open it, it will become like tongues of fire. There will be a fire in our mouth. We cannot help but speak the word, share the word. And we will watch what the Holy Spirit will do to our relatives, our neighbors, our classmates, and our loved ones. We ask you also to confirm your word. Every time it's out of our mouth, you will confirm it with signs and wonders and miracles. All for the glory of Jesus. Hallelujah. All for the glory of the name that's above every other name. All for the glory of the Son of God who paid his paid the price for our redemption and our forgiveness. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen.